Okay, you can see uh, it's more than one and a half years of work. Uh, we go through so many schemes on architecturally uh, and also uh, structurally too, so it has been a challenge. But overall, I would like to uh, emphasize one point. Uh, the design of the structure has to be rational in order to be cost effective and safe. Uh, you can see, as uh, Elizabeth pointed out, when we have a, a building so tall and so slender, so the aspect ratio is very important for, uh, for the building. So at the same time, we try to maintain the architectural shape. So basically, I want to highlight that. That's why we have a 70 meter taper up all the way and then achieve a height of almost like uh, 600 meter here, something like that. And at the, at the same time, we try to lower the center of gravity so that's why we're trying. We have a taper building shape, reduce wing low, and then more stability by lowering the center of gravity. That's why we have a triangular shape that works hands in hand with the architect and also engage the, the whole uh, elegant profile of the design. Yeah, as a responsible engineer, we want to bring the best solution for the architect. At the same time, sometimes we can become good architects as well as engineers if we give them the right advice. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to run the characteristics of this building. So from here to here, we have the real building that is occupied, but we have almost a hundred meter tall of tower crown. That is for different for the image functions. So, um, so um, where's the okay, you can see how 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 much we suffer because it doesn't contribute any for every. We have so much design work to do, so it's very challenging for structural engineer doing this rather than for place. And one of the challenge of the of building is also the uh, uh, when we deal with high rise building. Uh, we have done so many of them as like all of you have done so many. One of the characteristics is how do we cheat the wind? You know, the wind is, uh, and also uh, try to have a reasonable uh, earthquake design element. Uh, actually, we like the, the water scheme because we don't have a smooth uh, surface. We have uh, a stack of wall and all that. The, the water scheme curtain wall uh, is really helpful for uh, the wind air dynamic because it reduces vortex shedding. But unfortunately, uh, the client is driving the design. That, so. Uh, eventually we have a, a surface skin. <laughs> <laughs> but we have not given up, we still continue to work with our designer architect, so we try to introduce some corner notching and other thing in order to do some uh, uh, aerodynamics and we take up with the shape. So all this is being taken into consideration how to reduce water sharing. So as all of us as structural engineers, you know, what, what we need is stability. Okay, so stability means we can make full use of the building. So the best thing is, you know, if you, you, your body is the core of, a, of, of the tower. So if you bend the body, it's, it's, not ne it's never enough. So it will be too flexible. So we need the full width of the building to help us stabilize the building. Yes, so we, we need the full width of the building. So the only thing to do the full width of the building is we engage the core with the, with the perimeter of the building, which is the two super column, the super column. And then there's outreachers and outreaching, so we have the whole building uh, resisting the, the electrical forces. <coughs> Another thing I would love to do, and uh, that uh, I still want to do it but before I get kicked out by the architect, is I would put up a X, 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 X here outside the building. But if I do that, I will kill him. You know? <laughs> because he is not a, a shock anymore, you become a prison. <laughs> So it's very difficult to, to please uh, everybody. That's why usually when a structural engineer become a good structural engineer, usually they, they can please their wife. <laughs> <laughs> we have to please everybody. So eventually we come to compromise. We end up to have uh, to have a tower core, a tower core, the outrigger system. And then what do you do with the outrigger system? You need the bell trusses. I'll go back, please. So we have a tower core. Okay, I will talk about the core later. We have the bell, we have the super column, and then we have the bell truss, we have the uh, uh, outrigger truss. This is the outrigger truss. And so the core and the outrigger truss work together, give you the primary stability, and also we have a bell truss uh, to transfer all the gravity low columns, uh, local columns into this super column. So this is our primary system. Uh, that helps. What you see here, all the x tracing diagonal is just a floor diagram action. Those are the secondary structures to make it work. I'm not going into details. But looking at the core, uh, this is the, the mechanical floors, uh, China floors, and then you need every 15 meter or every 10 to 15 floor, you have mechanical system, you have mechanical floor, refuse floor, which is giving us the, um, the advantage to make 
to free up the core space to reduce the mechanical shaft and everything because each uh, each mechanical floor is serve, is serving you know the 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 the, 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 uh, seven, the fifteen floors above and fifteen floors below. So this is the core. But one challenging thing for this building is the tapering shape. The building is so slender. It's slender. It has an aspect ratio more than eight. So it's so slender. So as it goes up, if we have a huge core, if this core keep going up, set 35 meters by 35 meters going up, it will kill the space. And the top of the building, your core will be here. This is the face of your building. It's useless. So what do we do? Uh, we struggle a little bit uh, with the architect. So in order to make the core, which has to house 90 something elevators and the, and the, and the several means of egress, we, we develop a core as much as we can at the base to house all the elevators in this zone. We have an outer flange of the core, but when the building tapers in, we get to drop off these corners in order to return the space back to the architect. Okay, and so eventually, as it goes up, it will become a inner core. Mm. It's a inner. So basically, we have a big core going up to as much as we can, and then we drop off the corner, and then we have an inner core. But the inner core, we cannot transfer this core. We cannot transfer this core with transfer walls. Okay into the other core. So we have to bring all this wall all the way down and this wall all the way down. So it becomes a challenge to us, how do we economize two walls becoming a gravity wall and a lateral wall? This is a challenge. So we have done so many analysis, how to make this thickness to be reasonable. So I'm not going into detail. So this is not what I like, but we still can overcome this solution. And eventually, when this core drops off, when this core drops off, we try to taper, uh, right? We try to taper. This is the first time in the history of, of China war. We're tapering when this core strength is like a chimney. When the core goes up, we, we cannot just abruptly change the stiffness. So eventually, we basically taper the wall. We taper the wall, and it goes up. So yet we, we, we form a smooth transition. It creates another problem. When you have about 50-story building, and then sit with gravity, when you try to taper it, it creates a Internal compression it create kick. So on those floors, we have to design the horizontal diaphragm and so on. So basically, we do it within a zone, the 15 floor zone where the where with the mechanical floor system. So we take advantage of almost everything that we can. Just like when you build into a car, you open the hood of a car, you can you take up every corner you can fit in your your Ferrari into the car. Okay? <laughs> but this is more expensive than a Ferrari. So to make things things simple, uh, you can see. So you can see how the core wall drops out for each zone. So we end up, we started with 16 cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the X cells and X cells. So we drop off the corner cells, and then we become four cells, and then again the cells become smaller by tapering up, okay? So we try, still try to maximize the floor space available, but we cannot make abrupt changes. Uh, we still have to make the changes in the place that is allowed uh, by the architect. But you have to co coordinate with the contractor when you try to do sloping wall to see what kind of tolerance you can afford to build a sloping shear wall. So the core is also it's a composite core wall. It's, it, 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 is, uh, it has to contain steel and steel, uh, steel columns and steel plates and high strength concrete. In order to have a clear low path, a direct low path, because if you lost the low path, you know, you're in trouble as an engineer. So we have a clear low path to see how the low is constant. So at each corner, at the location where they have outriggers, we always have embedded steel column inside in order to connect to the outriggers so that the force can be, be very clearly identified. We also have embedded steel plate at the lower zone where we have high shear. So the, 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 the steel plate inside the shear wall makes the shear wall thinner and the building lighter so that it's a win-win situation. The, the lighter the building, the less is the seismic force, and the thinner the shear wall, the better a usable space for the architect. I want to emphasize one thing. Uh, you know, when you start the project, the core is the heart of the building. Don't, don't be shy to work closely with the architect and the mechanical consultant in order to fight for the efficient space you need. You can see we have a very systematic approach to the core layout. We don't have one big, one small, one big here, another. We are not doing interior design. We're doing structure. So it has to be <laughs> rational. You can do it for a house, but not for a building. This project has to be well managed and be professional.
The column is everyone hates, okay, except uh, except the engineers. We have to explain to the owner why the column is so big or, or too small. Okay, anyway, we try to use high string steel embedded in a uh, composite column with high string steel embedded in the uh, in the high string concrete. Yes, so anyway, uh, the lateral system is well defined, I'm sure. So we have nine zones. Okay, what do we do with uh, all this so-called? The building is, a, it is defined as a core, <coughs> the core with stiffness, and also with outrigger to give you more stability, but also we have this perimeter, bell truss. This bell truss working with the column is working as a mega frame. So the mega frame itself, because we have columns here, columns here, it's working like a frame, just like your table, you try to push it, you have the frame action. This is a, a, a redundancy and enhancement for earthquake. And you can see everything here is very simple. Boom, 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 so simple and very regular. When you have a simple system, keep it simple and stupid, Okay, you have an efficient structural system. And you can see the spacing of these bell trusses or the mega frame girder, the girder is very uniform space. So we have a very uh, efficient, very efficient design for earthquake. So the, the, the other thing is a uh, no brainer. I would like to go to the comp, the slab. The, the, the floor system is nothing but a, a composite steel beam with, with shear stuff, and also we have metal deck. Uh, we have all kinds of metal deck. We have open form metal deck or closed form metal deck. Uh, we don't want to do spray on fireproofing on the metal deck because it costs money to, to spray about three three hundred thousand square meter of metal deck. So we do. We, we try to use a metal deck that meets a vital requirement. So basically, this is the information we have on the deck. Uh, the power crown is, you know, I don't know what they call it. They call it the water drops or the pearl. To me, it's a lot of tears. I cry so much every day because every day we have, we, we have a new idea. <laughs> But anyway, at the end, when you finish, it's going to be beautiful with the architect and the branding. <laughs> well, anyway, as you see, the thing about the crown is we have a tower spy, and then we have a pearl on the tears that for myself. We have a TMD there. The TMD is, we have two types of TMD on this project. One is a pendulum, which is a, 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 a passive one. It's not active because it's cheaper that way. There's a pendulum hanging, there's the, the steel ball, which is about 600 times, is swinging and swaying. You know, the way it works is just like you go to the garden, you swing your leg up, you want to swing the leg down, so you can accelerate or decelerate. That's the main thing. But 600 tons is not even enough. We need about 1,200 tons of damping. Okay. So what do we do? So we have limited of space here. We don't have, we don't have, a, we don't have space to so house a bigger ball. So we don't have a ball, so basically we say, wait a minute, Mr. Architect or Ms. Architect, whatever, can we do something? So we have a we have a water tank down there, I call it a swimming pool, I call it a water tank, whatever. So we're using that water tank to work in combination as a sloshing. You know, you just how to wash it. So this water tank gives us the sloshing, but we have to tune it. It's not like you just put it like okay, water and slosh it. You can house a flower and grow roses, but it's not the case. We have to have wows to control the amount of water through the Venturi route to see how we control the amount of water sourcing from one tank to the other tank, working in sync with the TMD. So this is the first of its kind in the world. We have Six. about 25, the coal limit is about 25 mg. For apartment, for apartment comfort, it's about 15 to 25 mg. But our, our building right now has an acceleration because of the slenderness of the building, it's about 27 mg. So we need a, we need a damping system. Okay. Uh, this water tank also serves as a, as a fire tank to reserve water for fire fight, to, 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 for fire fighting purpose for the sprinkler system. Okay. So anyway, we do all kinds of tower analysis, we do seismic uh, analysis, we do linear dynamic analysis, we need, uh, you know, we, we do all kinds of tests. Uh, there will be another session by Mr. Paul Fu to tell you what analysis we go into it. We have progressive collective analysis. So everything that the structural engineer has to do and more, we have, we have done it. Uh, I'm not going to have called the podium because uh, uh, we have so many schemes on the podium, but basically the podium is also pretty much governed by the architectural design with so many schemes.
So foundation is nothing, it's a matte foundation with about 700 ball pounds, 1.1. It's about 60, it's about 90 meter deep high. So uh, we designed for green, we certified for gold, gold, gold standard lead and three star channel lead. I apologize, we don't have interesting videos and pictures for you because we're stupid <laughs> engineers. <laughs>